Uh, the president has said that he feels completely, uh, totally vindicated yeah. after uh, Mr. Comey's testimony yesterday. Yeah. What's your reaction to that? Do you see it that way? No, I don't see it that way at all. <laughs> but I do see that he might see it that way. Because, as I said earlier, facts, evidence, data, curiosity about the truth, discipline in his comments are not hallmarks of his presidency. What I did say this morning, in case you missed me on TV, is follow this. Now, this was early this morning, and in light of events that have come forth since. I said to him that New Yorkers have said to me, those who've had business dealings with him, he operates this way. First, he tries to charm you. President Bush tries to charm you. If that doesn't work, he tries to bully you. If that doesn't work, he walks away from the deal. And if that doesn't work, he sues you. So charm, bully, abandon, sue. And I didn't realize it, but when I got back to my office, like an hour later, I saw that they're filing suit against Comey. So he's, um, he tried to charm him. He tried to bully him. He tried to he, uh, toss him out. And now he's going to sue him. Following suit. I mean, he's, he's true to form, true to his nature. And that, you know, that's not how a democracy works. It may be how um, a bully works. But in any case, um, um, I think his statements need some discipline, and I don't know if anybody in the White House has the courage to discipline the president. Uh, as I've said about that, if you want to work in the White House, know your blood type because he'll throw you under the bus in a second, as he has done with others and when he has abandoned them. But um, it's too bad because he needs work and he needs sleep. Um, back to Comey's testimony, uh, I was yes. wondering what you thought about his comments regarding former Attorney General Loretta Lynch um, and his uh, confusion over her request to call the, um, the Clinton email probe a matter instead of an investigation, and also the fact that um, her meeting President Bill Clinton on the tarmac was sort of his final, uh, was, was sort of the, the event that made him decide to make his announcement yes. in July. Well, I respect what he had to say. That's how he saw the situation. I don't think, I think that uh, uh, President Clinton was probably paying a courtesy visit. Two people were in the same place. You say hello. It was unfortunate, though, because it was misinterpreted as for what it was. Matter investigation, I don't know that that's such a big deal. But I do say about uh, Director Comey that he came through. I think with great authenticity and sincerity. Uh, he is not a political person. I think that was quite evident, and that's a good thing for the director of uh, the FBI. That the president would even ask him for his loyalty is something so far beyond the pale. He's not the president's appointee. So let's get back to what I said before. Charm, come to dinner, come to whatever that is, Trump Tower. Do you like your job? Can you be loyal to me? I hope you will do this. If you went to the White House and you were invited to the Oval Office with the President of the United States, the leader of the free world, and he told you what he hoped you would do, anyone who doesn't think that that is an abuse of power maybe has never been in the Oval with the President of the United States, especially one was just cleared the room because he knew what he was doing was incriminating and he didn't want any witnesses. Yes, Madam Leader, to, to clarify that, do, do you think that he obstructed justice, that the president obstructed Well, I think he abused power. I think there's no question he abused power. Whether he obstructed justice remains to, for the facts to come forward, and that's what we want are the facts, and I hope that our Republican colleagues will not continue to stand in the way of our getting the facts. Uh, also, we'd like to see his tax returns because that will, again, help connect, uh, help connect the dots here. And again, maybe it will all be exculpatory, but let's find that out. Right now, we have to remove all doubt about the integrity of our government. Madam yes, Leader, some of us in the media have to take our lumps for saying that the president was under investigation for Russia when Comey yesterday said he wasn't. <coughs> Do you have any readout on, on how we've done and how we can fix things moving forward? Well, there is, again, it's about words. You know, it's, it's all about words. And the president has to understand this. 
words spoken by the President of the United States weigh a ton. It's not like any word that any of the rest of us would say. I mean, you had the power of words. That's what you do. You know the power of words. But spoken by the President of the United States, they weigh a ton. So when they say, am I under investigation? No, you're not. That, that doesn't necessarily mean your campaign is not under investigation. And again, I don't know what the subtleties were in terms of... of uh, well, uh, many I had the different impression. Said he was under investigation, and, and now it's time for us to say, well, we, we got it wrong. And from your perspective, how do we fix that? And how do we, we have an outside it? commission, uh, an independent outside commission that looks into it. Uh, and we make sure that public opinion is aware of the fact that this is important. Because in their lives right now, and always, what's important is their financial stability. Why are we not creating jobs? And how dare, how dare the, the, the Republicans and the president to say this investigation into the integrity of our elections and our government is an impediment uh, to our getting our agenda through? What agenda? Show us the jobs. Show us the agenda. Where are the bills? They did a bill yesterday that was robbed, robbed the middle class seniors, even our veterans, of financial stability by being, again, the handmaidens of Wall Street. And as I say, I don't paint everyone on Wall Street with the same brush. But I do say this, that they are the high priests of the special interest, and they sacrifice everything on the altar of trickle-down economics, tax cuts for the rich, special interest tax provisions in our code at the expense of working families in our country. So when we talk about increasing wages and all the rest of that, everything that they do is counter to that, whether it's whether they're doing with OSHA and NLRB and collective bargaining and minimum wage or all of those things. They're all in the negative column for them. But what's in the plus column is what works for Wall Street works for them at the expense of Main Street. And I said on the floor yesterday, millions of people lost their jobs, their homes, their financial security, their pensions, uh, the uh, savings for their children's education because of the, uh, what was happening on Wall Street. And the very bill to correct that, Dodd-Frank, they overturned yesterday. And just for good measure, they overturned the fiduciary rule, which only says that financial advisors should take into consideration the well-being of the, the investor that they are advising. So just give all the leverage to the other side. It's appalling, but it's, it's an opinion, and um, we have to make that debate in the public mind. And I'm confident President Lincoln said public sentiment is everything. You see public sentiment weighing in on their dastardly health care bill, hopefully public opinion, they will understand, and I understand, not as many people have seen just yet the personal impact of this overturning of Dodd-Frank, but if it ever became law, they would, and hopefully will, it will never become law. But on a health care bill, they do. Tip O'Neill said, all politics is local. I go one step further. When it comes to health care, all politics is personal. Everyone is an expert on what they need in terms of public policy and personal health and economic security. Uh, so we're pleased so far uh, that we've been able to stop them in throwing 23 million people. Somebody said, oh, it's not that many, it's 20 plus three or something. Having a result of 23 million fewer people having access to health care. Fewer people will have access to health care under their bill than had health care before we pass the Affordable Care Act. In other words, they're taking us not only back, but back, back. It's just a stunning thing. And why? All of this to give a tax cut to the high end. Transfer of wealth, Robin Hood in reverse, $800 billion from working families in our country going to the highest income and corporate interest in our country at the expense of working families. And just for good measure in their budget, they take another $600 billion out of Medicaid so that they can afford their tax cuts and the rest. So it is, uh, it is a stunning thing. It's an interesting opportunity. I, too, wish we could spend more attention on the economic stability of America's families, on job creation, on increasing 
wages and work and and uh, working conditions, etc., and and of course to save the health security of the American people, instead of having them make America sick again and attack the financial stability of America's working families. 